Right, time for a little victory dance again. We have a look at this. Uh, I've not done out with it since. Uh, I stopped for a brew, and then I've been round to the car garage, helped him bleed up some brakes, come back, had another brew, and then basically I, I was that far in front now. <laughs> not far in front. I could have just finished it by now, probably, but uh, I've got to do a video, on I? So I'll listen to a bit of tunes, switch the radio off now, ready, ready to do a bit before I go home. Uh, it fit first time, I didn't have to do now. From that last little video there where I stopped it, I said I'm going to try it on. I'll do a bit more titivating, get it get it near near to. It just went and clicked on. It does need a little bit more, but look, it's just sat there on its own. That's basically because I've not trimmed off that bottom corner yet. So that I've just spread it there, pushed it on, like just went squeezed it on, and them two corners either side, they're they're clamping pipe and holding it in place. So that's what we've got. That bit's going straight across there. That's Siamese off there, lovely. Still got a bit of a problem with that all, but it's not that major that I could either tap it down with hammer, or basically what I do there, you see how that, that bit is clamping the pipe? Once I blend that bottom edge in there, that'll trim that back and it'll trim it up to that, so then that might push on. Obviously, it'll touch up there. So it, it does want a little bit more grinding out, but for where it is, it's good enough now to try and work out the other side. So what I need now... So you just basically go from there to there and that's going to be roughly this pipe and i try and do this without knocking stuff over if that were on there you can see the height's right on that pipe angles looking right it basically just wants wants overlapping it wants a couple of inch chopping out the middle right guys got interrupted by a uh, neighbor again i keep calling them customers but yeah no neighbor he does a bit of art right corner uh Wanted an help drilling some metal holes in a metal frame for one of his pieces of art or something. So back on that that pipe there, nice and horizontal. Bike's leaning over a bit to the right, actually. So when you come back, I might have to alter that. Might have to put bike on axle stands on both foot pegs to get it sat level, just so I can get the levels right. But my next plan is, now I've got that piece made, is to probably make the joining collar, which would be like an inch and three quarters. This is inch and five eighths. So making a little inch and three quarter collar here, which will join the two together when it's finished. And I say, probably trim this one down. I'm gonna trim this one down. Now we're there, we're at overlap stage. So if you get that, that's butted up square with that pipe on the, the left hand pipe, which is the pipe on the right now. And it should fit level on there. And it's still looking like it's running level with this one. So that's the distance is good. Basically, I need to chop an inch off this one, possibly, an inch off this one, and then they'll both butt up to each other. So when I put that on there, that's probably sticking out more. It's, yeah, it's a bit more than a pipe's width. There's a bit of a gap, if you look. So that pipe's inch and five eighths. So, yeah, they want two inch chopping out, roughly. So an inch off this one, an inch off that one, and then I've got my join, which actually looks about right there. Uh, I'll have to look at it. I think, actually, I'll probably knock the two inches off this pipe, off the tailpipe, because this one's going to slot inside, in it? And then the, the joining collar will be sat smack bang in the middle, which is where I want it to be. I won't even look at the original pictures right like that to suss out where that is, because the right place is to put it is smack bang in the middle. So, yeah, if I can work out that, I'll probably chop off that back to there, make the collar go across. And then I should have all my pieces... And then I can start my next my next job on then. Once I've got all pieces made, these are all trimmed up. Is there'll be a one of the jobs will be to tack weld that onto there with my TIG welder, tack weld the left pipe to this pipe in my hand. And then the next job after that will be to get this bang on in the right position. It might need to move up and down a little tiny bit. And then it's to get my white marker pen out, my paint pen, draw around that all the way around this Siamese joint pull it off, get me welding torch out and burn an all in that, which will be the exciting part of the video. Then put it all back on the bike, assemble it all, tack the collar in the middle, tack this piece onto that piece, pull it all off, braze it round, put it all back on, finished. Guys, back at workshop, uh, fire's on because it's a bit nippy outside, blowing a gale. Uh, cold's actually going, actually, I feel a bit better. <clears throat> so this has been, what's well, it been over, like two, three days, this. Uh, basically, whip this out in an hard day. If you did a full day, 10 hours, whatever, you could have this done. Uh, a lot of fiddly in it and stuff like that. 
when I've obviously had I've had other little bits of jobs to do, always got messages, invoices, emails, postage to do. Then you get customers coming in, neighbours coming in, all that stuff. So it's it's this is day number three, and we're having it done today. We're having it done. So I've pulled it out into the middle of the room now. Uh, I'm going to basically to get it next to Tig Welder, which is here next to me. Uh, I'll, there she is. She's pretty much all done. All parts are made. They just all want positioning now. Uh, trim, I've actually trimmed them. They're, they're, they're looking good. Got my little TIG welder here, my little ESAB TIG welder. So that's, I should be able to get that down down to there. Basically, next thing on is to tack this left-hand pipe. It's confusing because everything's backwards, but that'll be your left-hand pipe. That's your right-hand pipe. I've tried to get them in so that they're like near enough even, but obviously that one has to whip across the front of the frame. So it has to come out a little bit further. But I've tried deceiving that by relaxing that bend out. So from the top, you're not looking too bad. If you line it up with that bracket there, bracket across, not too bad, bracket across, not too bad. Like they're near enough in line, but they, they can't physically be in line because this one's sat in front of the frame and that one's got to go past the frame. So next part on is that like i say that's the left hand pipe it's the right hand pipe in the picture but it's the left hand pipe on the bike uh, some people get this all back to front uh, which i found when i started bending exhaust pipes my uncle had wrote down some of the some of the instructions to bend standard pipes back to front viewed from this way around so that's your left that's your right but you always do them like that sat on bike that's how you that's how you you word it that's how you word it so that that one's on but it still wants Still wants a bit of grinding because, like I said on the last bit of video, that bit there is too tight, so it's grabbing all that pipe, which is helping me because it's it's just staying there on its own. I made up this one that works, that collar's right, so that that's how much I'm gonna weld on to the other side. If you see that gap there, that's how much is be welded onto right hand pipe, and then it's gonna join into that left hand pipe. So. What I did when I come in, I trimmed that. I noticed when I packed it away last night that this very tiny gap between there and there were bigger on the other side. So I've just knocked, I don't know, about three milli off that pipe there. Uh, I just eyeballed it, I didn't measure it. That's, that's how you work when you're working on British bikes, just eyeball it all. Uh, and then that there, it looked like lovely, lines up. I can get that tacked on, welded on there. So that's probably going to be my next job is to wick me TIG welder out, tack that on there, and then <clears throat> when I take this branch pipe off, when I come to put it back on, I know exactly where it needs to go because this pipe won't move. So that pipe there has been fixed, and it's let me work out this left-hand pipe. All I'm going to do now is fix the left-hand pipe, and then that'll help me position this right-hand pipe when I take it off. So that's my next job is to get that wedged up there and then tack it on a couple of times. And then what I'm going to do is draw around that one, the Siamese part, probably grind it a little bit more, take it off, draw around it, and then burn an hole in that in that right hand pipe, in the long pipe, take that off, grind it up, make sure the hole's all right, and then put it back on bike and tack this to the long pipe. And then once I've got it tacked on, I can pull it all off, braze around everything, braze, tack this collar on at that point then as well. So this collar don't move backwards and forwards. I'll have to move it to the left, which is opposite way around on your video, uh, so I can get this branch pipe on and off. But once I've got it on and off and I've got it in the right place, I'll actually tack that to this side. So that, that collar there, tack to this side. And then I can take it all off, braise it all round, and it's finished. Apart from the bracket don't line up, uh, it wants five or ten mil trimming off the back end of the pipe that'll be the last job i do and then it'll be finished so let, let's get welder out let's get welder out let's get down there let's get camera set up i'll start doing a bit of tacking start doing a bit of grinding put it on high speed i think so you, so it'll just fly through this next stage Uh, if you, you can hear me on video there, can't you? Because I've not flipped and speeded it up yet. 
basically before you start loading that bike you need to make sure the battery is disconnected it's got a little gel battery in it can't get it out of the toolbox because it's rammed in there I don't know how he's put it in the allen keys to take it off are absolutely tiny I just tried taking it off and I thought hold on it's got a fuse in it there it's got an inline fuse customer has already took the fuse out so that's not connected to the bike that battery or it's not on the negative side ideally I'd take both of them off I think minimal amount you should take off is the negative side uh, I always think just to be sure take them both off but that positive side is it's a bloody nightmare to be honest I don't even know how he's got that in how he's got battery in there or anything but yeah it's fuseless so I think that should probably do it he's obviously he's obviously took that into account because no, I don't. I, I don't know to be honest. But he's took it into account because it's all open. That's all over there. Finger across that one. I think. Uh, I say I can't get to that. And I don't know how he's run that in there. But yeah, there's no, there's no negative wire on that. So we'll just, we'll just go with that. I think. Because that's what I, that's what I were aiming to do with. But Allen key would take that negative side off. But then I've noticed there's no fuse in it, so that negative that it's not attached to anything. Basically all your electrics, uh, the negative earths that frame on it, so then if I put my welder to the frame as well, then I'm putting a lot of power through that negative into the battery in, in a long way around. Why 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 is not my fault here but <laughs> I think I think he's already sorted that out for me. So which what I ask, would ask to do, so like disconnect your battery, I don't want it on. Can't do anything. But it looks like he already has, so yeah, fingers crossed that he's right also attached on that. Right, let's get this pipe going up. And then we can start moving on, start moving forward. Turn that off so it don't make a bunch of noise. Let's go and have a look. Let's go and have a look. Get rid of that. Get rid of that one. If you look over there, it's tacked up, it's nice and in line. Gap still a little bit big there, but still a nice gap here. Nice gap there. That's how she's looking, that's how she looks in the photographs as well, so. I think we'll be spot on with that. The idea, I'd probably move it in if I can get that there. That'd be a better gap. So I'm just going to have a bit of a play with it, I think, now, just to see. Just to see if I can get it a little bit tighter. That's why you only tack it on, because there's anything that I can alter it if need be, but. That wants to be. Right, I'm going to do. I'm going to pull this one out, trim a smidge, trim a little smidge off the head again, another two mil, something like that, just to bring that gap in a little tiny bit, mainly just so it matches the gap on the other side. I'm talking like millimeters, but. That's how I like it to be. Millimeter accurate. Need my gaps tight. Let's keep the gap tight. If you wanted big gaps, you're just gonna buy one. You're gonna buy an armor's pack and you get massive gaps. Uh, so if you're having it bespoke me, if you wanna you pay three miles on top of it. Let's see now, let's see if I can get that a little bit closer in. It's 
It's looking good, right? I'm gonna uh, start trimming that, that tailpipe in a little tiny bit. Also, I think I'm gonna trim while it's off. Trim 10 milli off that just so I can get the bracket in place. Just so this is sat in the right place, I wanna make sure that bracket's on the right bit. Because this, at the moment, is touching the peg. And I wanna pull it a little tiny bit away, but that'll end up bringing that branch out a bit like that. And the other thing is how far will that slip on that way? I might end up, I'm not decided yet, I might end up welding 10 milli on the end of this, this branch pipe. Just to move that collar across before Forehand, it won't move no further across because of the because it starts going up the bend. But now I've positioned it in the right place. I can actually gain 10 mil. So in case of chopping 10 milli off that one, putting 10 milli on that one, it'll move the collar into the middle. And then it might also help me with when I'm altering this this pipe here. That's it now. It just wants just wants tiny tweak because it's all in the right place. So now it's just a case of making it all fit right. So let's Let's have a look, I'll, show, I'll give you a show. And if you could see me through that gap, I don't bloody know. But, so now we've got that gap right down on the inside of there. If you can see through, oh I don't know, through there, there's still a gap here. Still see daylight coming through there. It's, it's really hard to tell, but there's enough gap there. Uh, my problem is now, yeah, my bracket all here, that one's moving across, so, this is this is tight on it won't go no further on basically because the silencers get tighter here where they're welded so what i need to do is that distance there i need to knock it off the end of this pipe take silencer off cut that much off the end of the pipe put silencer back on bolt it in just make sure that this isn't touching here so i can pull that out like that, and then it's not touching i've got a nice nice gap there but it'll all depend on where this all lines up with that how far it because this obviously wants to come a bit this way so i'm gonna do that uh see how it looks it's really hard this like the camera this way around is not not what i'm used to so it's really hard if i had it normal way around like you would have i'm doing one of my updates 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 i could carry it around me you'd all see what i could about see what i was doing Let me mark that way, let me mark that where it were. That were there, weren't it? Yeah. That's not a bad way of doing it. If you line that up with all there, basically, I need, it, it needs to be where, where it was. Chop that much off end. Be inch and a quarter, something like that. So I'll take that bit off, take this out. Take it over to me Met Brown chop saw. Let's get it over there in chop saw. Don't know if I can position this so you can see it. But yeah, put that in there. Line up that black line with disc. Give it a chop. Might actually be able to do that while I've i tighten it up with my knee. <laughs> Tightening that up with my knee. Just so. That's the problem, isn't it? You need, need more than one hand. Not a bad guess, but black line, that. <laughs> Fire that on. Give that a bit more of a tighten. <laughs> Fire through it. Flick that off. Undo this with my knee, I think. There we go. Now, next part of the job there, normally, bang it, get shavings out the end, take it over here. If you can see, let's put that on the bike seat, see if it'll stay upright. Well, well yeah, you're all right. That over there is made of We're gonna get that there now, take the end off it. basically do that now because I don't want to come back and do it at the end. 
So I'll take the inside out as well. The deburrer. Make sure that's nice and smooth. So no one's going to sharp take the fingers off on it. This, once it's in, now this might be the last time. Oh, I have to pull it back out to burn an all in it. It'll want an all burning inside there. Yeah, let's stick that back in by now. Let's let's get you down here and get you a different view. So I'm not boring you to tears. There we go. That on. silencer in place there's a foot peg somewhere to join this on I don't know if it goes on inside or on outside but it fits a lot nicer on in, when you put it on the inside of this mounting peg here when you wear the that all there if you put it on the back side of it it fits better I don't know where it was can't be the telephone from photographs but it would fit here it's fitting here so that's where we're going Right, that should be it. Put a peg in there. My well, problem is it sloped down this silencer. I've not sussed the way out and sorted that out yet. I've made maybe give it a go. There's not much you can do about it sloping down. Ideally it wants a bit taken off the bracket. The bracket wants to be shorter. Still, still touching the peg. In fact, still touching the peg when I've finished with it. Down there. If that's still touching peg, I'll put a bit of a dent in it before I finish. Next part, get a spanner, a little spanner. A little spanner, just knit this up, make sure it's all the way in. Bits now, we're talking, we're talking millimetres everywhere now, so if I don't tighten this up, the rest of it will be out. Let's get in there. I don't know whether I can just eat that out a bit. It's not, it's not the best silence of that, it's got a bit of run out on it, and so like, that should run straight with bike and it's actually tipping out a little tiny bit, and it's tipping down a little tiny bit, like it wants a little bit of a twist putting on bracket, probably opposite way around, but that's it, it's on, and I've actually got a gap now, now I've just pulled on it a bit, and yeah, you see, a little bit of daylight coming through there, that's a gap, so we'll leave that as it is, that's that set. <laughs> Now it's a case of shaping this in, shaping that in and get that in there. Obviously, this is the bit where I've gone wrong now. Trim that up so it would fit in that, like that. But I need to take a little bit of this out. So when I take a little bit of that out, that'll come further towards us. It'll leave a gap between the two. That's where I was saying I might need to weld 10 mil back on this. Well, that's the perks of doing it in metal, isn't it? Like you can just chop a bit off, weld a bit back on. Easy go, blend that back in. It'll be even by collar or the braze that I put on the collar. I lied 10 mil of that, so that might be my plan. Because uh, you've all seen me do this, I think I'll I'll get that somewhere dead on close now, and then we'll mark round it. We'll mark round it and take this pipe off and burn an hole in it. Right, let's let's go for it. I'm going to turn the music back up and do a little bit more. Wow, look at the air. Uh, <laughs> Excuse the air. I'm going to get that cut tomorrow. Uh, sort that, sort that mess right out. Uh, I've done what I said I was going to do. I've added 10 mil to that middle pipe, trimmed it back, trimmed a bit off the other side, trimmed a bit on the inlet, 
all gaps are nice now, like proper nice. Uh, done a little bit of grinding on that branching. Uh, looks all right. I'm not going to go any further with it because it's it's as good as it needs to be because the rest of it will be filled in with weld. Uh, get that air back in. <laughs> right, I'll this is basically where we're at now. It's on. It looks lovely. I'm going to get me my paint pen out. I'm going to find a paint pen. I'm going to get it out. Don't know where it is. Let's have a look at this big drawer. There we go. Paint pen. Get that out. Next plan is. So, like we're saying, I've, you can see there where I've, where I've welded the 10 million. All that's done is, I could have left it, but it's it's moved that collar a bit more into the middle. But it just makes it look a little bit nicer. <laughs> like, 1% nicer. It's it's not much, but it all adds all adds up when you get to the end. They say that gap there is a little, still a little bit of a gap there. It's actually like a weird little kink in the pipe. I've tried flattening it out. But I could make it worse if I just carried on going. I've also rounded off the bottom. It probably just wants a little bit taking off there. But like I say, I can fill that in with braze, so I'm not going to go too mental with it. As you can see now, that gap there, really nice and tight. Nice, nice little bit of air coming through there, a bit of light. This gap down, same, same gap here. In fact, now that's touching there, so I need to just pull and tweak that now before I, before I draw around it. Otherwise, when I weld it on, it will be touching. Like same thing, I could put a dint in it, but... I'd rather it just be just right, so just pull that out. It's probably creak round while it's been sat on bike. All the rest of it's all right. Ah, that's where it's... There's less of a gap there under peg as well. So, yeah, just wiggle it about first now. Then give it a draw round. Uh, take it off, burn an all in it. Clean all this black scale off. And then braze it on. Right guys, I've just had a look, I've got 15 minutes worth of memory left, so let's let's keep it quick and keep it sweet. Uh, where's my white pen? He's probably got another like <laughs> 50 more than an hour's worth of footage on this. Yeah, you'll all be bored. Uh, yeah, so I want to have my gaps, man, gaps. That, that gap there's just about just right. You can get that set, if you get that set on this, if that were, if that were clamped tight there, that'd be just right. Pull that. It's basically that one way to go up. It's slipped down. That's looking. That's looking about right there. Right. The trick is now draw around it. Get that drawn around there, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna burn it out. Let's make sure all them gaps are still right. Yeah, tight, 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 tight. Right. This is basically that's where that's gonna sit. When I. When I, when I weld it on, that's where it's going to sit. It's going to be a tricky tricky one to draw around because I can't get to the back side, I don't think. Aye, aye, aye. Scribe would be better, but I can't see the scribe when I'm, when I'm burning it. These white pens, it's like fireproof, isn't it? So I can, when I get my blow up me, welding torch out and I try and burn an hole in it, this white pen will actually still be there when I get the metal red hot. If you if you do it with a scribe, can't really see see the scribe line through the flame. So that's why I'm trying to avoid using the scribe. The scribe would work well here though, because I'd be able to get it down back. Right, let's pull that in bits. That's where it's going to go. That's the, tail, that's the branch pipe off. Basically, yeah, we need to create an all in there so the gas will flow through there. Right. Oh, big mallet. I've got a big mallet for this. I've got a big mallet out yet. <laughs> big mallet. I want to stick a block underneath that so that won't touch floor. There we go, that's my mark. So I'm basically I'm gonna burn an all just on the inside of that. Uh, it's a bit of a tricky game really because the pipe will actually move. But yeah, let's get that on the bench and get ball torch out. Right gang, gas bottles are out. I've got a lighter, let me get the goggles. It's one of them where you realise you've not got much time left on your video, you just have to wrap it up faster. 
get to the end like brrrr. Super. Chatted too much, haven't I? Chatted too much shit and I've had too many people phone me and too many uh, too many customers come round and shit. Right, bit of chalk. I've got a bit of chalk in here somewhere. Basically, I want to keep away from that line because that line is the outside of my branch pipe. So, so I want to I want to leave about a few mil, three mil or so. And that's going to be my rough. Try and stick to that white line on inside. All right, get it melting, get it melting, and then just blow it through. There we go. Probably can't see my white line. Start it from the other side now. Here we go. One hole. Basically, you see it's well within that white line. But now I've got I've got an area now I can actually get in there with grinder. Just start grinding that back. So I'll grind it back towards the white line now. With grinder, which helps take all that all that burr off. Dross. Dross that's called. Uh, I suppose that, that made that look easy, but I did start my life out as a plasma cutter and then a laser cutter and a so I do know a bit about dross and feeds and curfs and all that kind of stuff. If you go too fast you build up dross, if you go too slow you build up dross, if you've not got enough air pressure you build up dross, if you've got too much air pressure you build up dross, there's just a fine, you need to get it bang on right just to stop it from, from welding itself back in. Right, I'll give that a pause, get my grinder out and we'll we'll get that polished. Right, we'll do this on end up bar here because this way like I say I do everything here, it just gives me something to prop on. It, that's your all looking nice so if I get my little branch pipe out now that'll fit over that and you can't see any of it so that's how that's going to go on there and he's clean paint off that clean there's a little tiny bit of dross in top and bottom in there where I can't get in with grinder I'll just pull them out with pliers get it file in there and get them out uh, and then we'll put it all back on bike, tack it together, pull it off, braze round it. Pretty much bike's finished after that. After, yeah, braze that on there. Braze the collar on there. Braze the little clasp bolt on the top. It's done, finished. So we're in, well, we're in last stages here, last stages. Right guys, time to put it all back together and get, get Tigwell out, tack, start tacking it off. I don't think I've got anything, but I don't think I have. This high speed now, trying to beat, we've got nine minutes left. Oh, I'll tell you what I have got to do. Uh, which... I'll show you the fun part. I'll show you the fun part of tacking this on and brazing it. But I've also got to make a little bracket here to go onto that. Just a little tiny tab to go onto there. Boring, proper boring stuff that's so up. I'll skip that out of my, out of my video. that on there this ready to fill over that hole that should go on there butt up to there a little bit higher up I think I right, just give it a quick check round all the way around and then I can put a few tacks on with, with TIG welder I just want to make sure that I've covered the hole it's tricky tricky because you can't see now Still wants to come up a little tiny bit. Still wants to come up a tiny little bit.
Right, get in there. That's over the hole. That is over the hole. Gaps look good. Right, time to tack it. I need to probably hold it as well while I tack it, which is a TIG, MIG welding job, really. So you put a TIG tack there, but MIG weld it just leaves it a bit dirty. So. And get that on there, get that right back of you. Oh no, <laughs> get it right in front of you. Yeah, we're going to struggle here. Maybe get it on there. Oof. Right, need to flip it, check it all again now. Tap it all back in with our left. Still got a gap. where it wants to go but by the time I get my helmet and stuff it'll pop back off. Oh it's not it's stayed right So I'll go make that now. I'll stop the video. We'll go make that and we'll pull it all off, raise it all up, put it all back on. Bosh. Uh, another good thing to do while it's on here is to mark the top or the bottom of this pipe. I can't remember where the bolt wants to go, but if I mark the top, if anything, I know that the bottom needs, yeah, the bolt needs to go on the opposite side of it. I'll check it on the original. Whoa. I'll tell you some original, it's there, it's on the back. So it needs to be there roughly. It's going to be a tricky. It needs to be on the back side of it. That's where it is on that armour's pipe, which they must have copied off an original one at some point. So that's where they are, the original ones, the, the ridden on the back side, which is a nice place to put it. Right, I'm going to crack on. We'll get, I'll show you an interesting bit of brazing all around that. Then we'll put it all back on. I'll only have a few minutes left. Video done, probably. Let's do it. Right guys, all done. This is it. First of all, that's that's me left hand pipe buffed in. That's where I've joined them both together because you can't get them two bends that close together. That's the end of one bend, that's the end of the other bend. You need about four inches in it to mandrel bend it, so that's just two blended together. It's a little bit out of line on the back side, but it's better it being out of line on the back side than this is the front side, isn't it? It'll sit like that. So there's a little bit of a bump here, but it's it'll be hidden by by the pipe in a way. That that's probably going to be your ropiest bit of the full job, is that bit joining them two together. It'd be nice if you can make them in one piece. Uh, I think they might have done them in one piece. If you were making hundred of them, you'd alter your tool in so it'd grab hold of all for them. So you'd put a radius on your on your clamp and a radius on your clamp so it'd grab it before you bend it. But I'm not making hundreds of them, so that was the only way you could get round that. Uh, I need to do a little bit of dressing up on this. Just notice a couple of these welds on here need a bit of a, a little bit of a dress before I before I braise them all the way around. So this is that's it there. That's that's the branch. That's the collar. It'll want a little clasp bolt putting on. I need to suss out where that is. I think it's about there somewhere. That that black line there wants a clasp bolt putting on there. So it's just a full brazing job now, I've finished with me tacking got me clear goggles on and I saw so just sit there yeah. 
stick it on if you have the brackets on ready to go so just braise that on there as well so that's what i'm going to do now get get the torch out get the get the flux out probably fill that side in first there eh? that because that'll be flammable get the green goggles out find the lighter make sure you're still watching us yeah you're watching us you've got 14 minutes i cleaned up the phone a little bit uh, Say 14 minutes will probably mean you've got an hour and a half worth of video, which I think is a bit long, isn't it? I might, there might be a bit of trimming in video. <laughs> God, what's this like? Me, this is just my third video, isn't it? The other one were like it was five videos, but they were 10 minutes long, so this is my first full video. Uh, that's my flux tub. That's my flux powder, it's a bit of Sif, Sif, Fis, still, Sif flux. Sif's a brand, isn't it? Sif, you get Sif, Sif rods, Sif flux. That's Sif, Sif bronze flux. Get that in there, that's all right. Go and mix that with some water, make a paste. Let's paste up some joints. Oh, that, that bit there wants that that bit there wants sanding first, because I've tacked it on without taking the black off first. Uh, yeah, bit of sandpaper, a little bit of sandpaper. I've got to pour it over here. Let's get a bit of that off. It's just that, that that black scale lifts when you eat it up and it'll start, it'll contaminate the flux. The flux will try and get underneath it and... It's the same as soldering really, you just want it, you want it nice clean, clean metal when you... When you braise, basically, otherwise it will just stick to that skin. If you don't take the skin off, it will stick to the skin, and then it's not even stuck to metal, it's just stuck to the skin. I just notice another thing here, there's a gap there, but what I'll do with that, I'll warm that up with torch and tap it down. Once I, bra I braise around the top, braise around the side, and I'll warm that up, tap it down, then braise around it. This often happens, this, where you, you notice a bit you've missed. The problem is now <laughs> need to get rid of all that all that off there, all that it's left a lot of sand behind. I'll give it a bit of a right that's enough there, that's but I've mixed some of it in there as well now. Right, let's start again. Right, let's paste up some joints. Let's lay down some bronze. Get my torch, my torch is already out. Got a rod. Bronze rod out. Green goggles on. I'll start with that one while I'm on this side. Let's 
see one tiny little bit of sand in there bouncing around. That's that side off. Oh, that one nice and neat, nice and neat. <coughs> Flip it over and do the same on the other side. First of all, I'll do the other side of that bracket. So there's still a little bit of sand in there as well. need a different angle on this by the time we get halfway along it's too vertical it's good for this first section but then it, it turns so we'll just get half of it on and then I might do that warm up the end and tap it over a right, nice braze to start off with that wants to be sat more like that, it's, this is where it starts getting a bit complicated. I don't know if you can see that there. We'll start there, I'll spin camera around a little bit. Because that'll give me, give me a bit of an angle to get that tap down. I need to look for a hammer while I'm... While I'll warm that up. Basically, just close that gap up because it just make it easier to braise. And it's something you can't do with a TIG roll with that. It's as simple as that. I'll put a little tack on it, I think, to hold it in place. And then re-angle it again. Try and find a better spot. That's not bad there. Tilted that up a bit. I have to throw, I'm running out of balls there. Let's get you around here. Probably rerun that back in. It's not. It's trying to run away into the back of the fight. But once I get a bit on, I can lay a bit more over the top. I just get it to seal itself up first. Now yeah, that's sealed it. I'll seal this bit in as well. Oh, Rob's getting a bit off. And then I'll go around tart it up afterwards. Make it look nice. Get a new rod out because this one's getting very, very, very hot. I think it's one of my very good thermal conductors is a brazing rod. Right, so that's we can run that bit in as well, that's a bit blobby there. Majority of that done. Uh, the branching wants a, wants a bit over lean over the top there. It's easy enough. Could get a new rod out and do that straight away, and then just tie it up, and then I'll have to find a way of propping that up so I can run round it. We'll pause video from there uh, and see what I need to do now. Yeah, just braise round that same technique. Just braise round that collar. Put a bit across there. Put a bit more filler in there just to make it proud. Uh, right, guys. Uh, end of the day as predicted it's done uh, I've got an hour left or whatever I'm going to stick it on bike let's have a look let's like get it up and show it here with my face that's it done all nicely braised together nice Siamese that's what everyone likes to see is a proper good branching like a nice long branching so it does look like a branch and not 
a spigot in a way, or a, what would you call that? A spigot, probably, where it just comes out sideways. It's not a branched in. That's branched in. That's what a proper Siamese should look like. So it should look like one when it's chromed. And what I'm going to do now is we're going to set the camera up in front of the bike again. Uh, I've got seven minutes. I managed to gain another seven minutes now. Last video cut short, but it cut short just as I was going to go and turn it off. So I've got seven minutes. I'll sit down on the floor, put it all on. Uh, exciting but bit of this will be. If it don't fit, you'll all be there to see it not fit. If it does fit, it does fit. We'll share the glory together. Right, let's get me little stand out. Uh, let's stand out. Where's me flipping stand? Lost it. Here it is. Here it is. Here's stand. Let's get stand out. So you ready? It could all go good or it could all go bad. This. Uh, I'll try and get you a bit closer in. If I can. And put it on wide angle there. Eh? Let's get it on wide angle. Let's try and get you all a bit closer in. I'll get myself in way though sometimes. We'll do it about there. And then I'll show you, I'll show you gaps and that when I, when we get there, I'll try and cover my arse up. Uh, it's tricky, it's tricky. It wants a bolt put in it yet, but. So that's it, I've got, that, that's me, nice, that's me long pipe, that's me short pipe. That wants to go in there. Like that, and then put it all on bike. But it's a case, this bit's hard. This bit is really hard, even as a, professional exhaust bike fitter in a way this this bit is always tricky when you're doing crossover pipes you've got to put them both in at the same time and then wiggle them in and it's if you make a really nice set of pipes and a nice tight fitting it could be an absolute nightmare to get them on but then once they're on they're on we're like that collar in there is tight straight away but it's a good fit and that needs to go into Ed. So we'll get that in Ed there. And now, now, now probably start wiggling it. Got a long way to go yet. One of them where you might not be able to get it off once it's on. Big hammer helps again, that big, that flagging hammer. That's what these are for, aren't they? For whacking slabs down with. And that works nicely because it spreads the weight of the blow. It just allows you to tap it without putting a dint in the pipe. So yeah, if you, if you ever fitting pipes, get one of these out your, out your shed. This this is going to take some going. This I think. Starting, she's, she's slowly going. Still got a long way to go across on that. I should check that that goes all the way in first, and I'm getting a bit bloody warm doing this already. I've only been doing it two seconds. Right, get that off. Right, it might be a bit, well, it does, it slips, then it slipped past. It's wiggling, it's wiggling. Right, we're a bit closer. Send this video to the customer once I've finished it. <laughs> so they'd be like, these pipes don't fit then. They will fit. It just. Just that pipe. Come on, get across the map. There we go. Now we're getting there. We're actually we're very close. Got a couple of mil gap down there. And it just wants to come across a bit more. A bit more. Right. Right, 
wind it in at that. It's that, yeah, there we go, that clicks. That's where it wants to sit. Gaps look good, gaps look good. That's tapping there though, I know. That's a bit tight down there though, there's just so much stop. It's not, that, that nut should was in there quick. So it's just trying to bite down I think. Which means I've not got it all the way. There'll be a bit of distortion in it. We're talking like less than a mil of distortion somewhere. Well, that's enough to throw that all out. There we go, now it's in. Little push down on the back of there, but it's still not bang on in line because I've got still it's touching up on that, which is going to give me a little bit of rattling issues. Well, that's because it's not butting in all the way on over on that side, which might mean it won't knock in on that back side. Have a look in now. Right guys, that video took longer than I thought. That was seven minutes out. I was just I just sat there on the floor for a few minutes telling you all about that silencer. And none of you are here to listen. You go and check back at the phone. It's turned itself off, run out of minutes. Go and start video back up and it gives you another three minutes. And it just like plucks memory from its arse, I think, sometimes. But it's looking good. I say, I've got to take it back off just to double check a couple of things. Mainly slot issues, gap issues. But there's no, there's no gap issue at all on this. Well, oh, there might be a touch down there. What am I, <laughs> that's moved since I've tightened it up. So it's just touching there, which I might put a little dint in. That there, you've got a nice bit of air gap through that. That's a nice, that's a nice gap that there. That's like a two mil, three mil gap. Uh, yeah, I might slacken it off and tighten it back up again. So yeah, it fits, it fits, that's, that's, that's the main thing, is it fits and it looks nice. They say a little bit of a gap there, which might be a fitting issue, where I can pull that, pull it back and down. Uh, I want to pull it off just to make sure that that pipe covers up the gap where the slot's in the bottom of it, where they put the bolt across. It's got a, it's got a pinch bolt in the bottom of it, so it, it leaves a gap, and if the pipe don't fully cover it, then a bit of gas will come out of there. But yeah, that's that's uh, finished. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. Just say, just take it all back off, put it back on again, check out gaps, make sure it's sweet. The one I was trying to solve was that gap there outside at footrest, which you can't see there. You see that daylight there? Not touching. That's how I like it. Just you can just see light through there. It's all fastened up, so it won't even touch that when it's rattling. So that, that's good, I, I was aiming to get that, but then it's just pulled that too, which is what I was saying about when you tack it on, you braze it on, that's probably just pulled round, just tweaked itself round. The other good bit is that clasp bolt, that join is in the middle of that frame. Clasp bolt's on backside, so it's hidden. Customer's gonna be more than happy with that, I think, more than happy. So I just need to take it off, put it back on again, make sure it does fit like it does, and then, Pack it up, give the guy give the guy a call and tell him to come and pick it up. Well happy, well happy. Right guys, I'm gonna finish this off with the wildest haircut you've ever seen. That's all going that tomorrow. That's because I've had goggles on that and it's just been sat there. Sat like that all day on top of goggles. Uh, I'm gonna push this bike over there now. It's, I've sorted it, sorted it, pulled it all back off, put it all back on again. Gaps are good, man. Gaps are good. So, what I'm going to do is push it over there, get camera out, which is in my hand, uh, phone these days, isn't it? Get camera out, and I'll take a few photographs, do a post, and then I'll edit this up at some point, stick it on YouTube for you all to watch when you've got two hours free. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, let me flick you all at short gaps here. Uh. 
I showed gaps and then I'm going to take some photographs. So my problem were before, I didn't have a gap here. Whereas now we can see daylight, hallelujah. Got daylight over there, hallelujah. <laughs> I just know it is fun. Why does it creep about like mad? I'm going to put a dent in that, I think. I'm going to put a dent in there. Because if, basically, if you close one gap up there, then it's creating a, it creates a gap down there. If I close that gap up, so that's touching now, then it creates a gap up here. So I basically, I'm going to have to put a dent in that. That I had a gap that before I went and sat down and I had a, I had a brew. It's basically, when I've tightened, pulled it in with bolts, I think, it's, it's just touched up. Yeah, quick dent in that, a bit neatest place to put it. But yeah, that's it, finished, all fitted up, all bolts on, bolts on back, bolts on front, all fastened in. Happy with that. So yeah, I'm going to take some photographs. Right, quick change of plan. Uh, going to be hard to edit all these videos together. What I've done, slacken that off. I've took it out completely and the gaps reappeared. It's going to be hard to show you. But yeah, you can see gap between there now. So one of my plans is I just grabbed a couple of washers out. This could this could save it. If I see if that off spring washer will fit over there because that's the thickest. See that? If I put that behind back of there before I tighten it up, that might that might that might just pull it off that foot peg just enough. Uh, and if it does, then I'll think of a way of brazing one on back of that bracket. But save me putting a dent in it. will keep it all nice. Uh, that's going to be my quick solution i think instead of instead of warming up putting a dint foot peg i could do both i suppose and then yeah possibly braise a washer on back of that tab there just to space it off right i'm gonna i'm gonna do that and then take some photos